Hey guys, what's going on? Today, we're not doing a van. We're, I told you guys I like doing unique tours of unique people's living situations or travel situations, and that is what we're doing today. We are touring a shuttle bus. City shuttle bus. City shuttle bus. Yep. so it's the same shuttle that the city of Portland uses. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna get into all of that right here, right now. Uh, I got Sam, I got Claire. Did I just do the pointing right? I don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Cause look at this bus, we're gonna check it out right now. Hey everybody, so we will get back to the tour here in just a minute. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that is tuned into my channel and or this tour in particular uh, means a lot to me, so thank you. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell because I actually do lives once a week on Wednesdays. So having that notification bell will actually alert you when I go live. I do like to interact with my audience as best that I can. I try to go to as many events as I can, and I do a lot of Q&A. What my channel is about is anything tiny living related, whether it's van life, actual tiny homes. I'm hopefully going to get into more of design and creating tiny homes as well as container homes, which is a true passion of mine. So after three and a half years of living full time in a van, I decided to get an overlanding rig. But one of my true passions is actually sharing other people's design and ingenuity from their own vans, buses, tiny homes, maybe container homes, overlanding rigs, SUV life, anything of that nature, I do like to bring it to you guys. I also bring a lot of shop tours where I go into companies, show information of what companies are doing for tiny house spaces. So let's keep this ball rolling because this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So just a quick minute about Skillshare and what it can do for you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of professionals teaching you on how to open up your creative mind. For all of you nomads out there and people that like to travel and love to do photography, then there's a class for you. There's many classes for you. One in particular, Fundamentals of DSLR Photography with Justin Bridges. He breaks down the fundamentals. I mean, it's right there in the title. It tells you everything you need to know. But it gives you 12 lessons on how to take photos properly. I know there's so many of you out there traveling and want to get better at photography. So take this opportunity, click that link below, and browse through the amazing classes that these professionals have to offer. With that link below, you get a free trial for their premium membership. Once your trial is up, it is less than $10 a month from there on out. Unbelievable opportunity for everybody out there. Go check out Skillshare and click that link below. The reason why I got this creepy guy right here just walking around is because um, Sam, you're actually an employee for Light Harvest Solar. I sure am. By the way, this is the oh, owner, owner of Light Harvest Solar. Yep. Miles. I just want to be a part of it all. I know you do. I want to hang out with the cool kids. Well, you are cool, oh, right? Thanks. And these people are even cooler. They have a DIY converted city, which I just found out, it's a bus. Yep. What did, like, where did you guys find this thing? We found this on Craigslist. I was going to go down to Arizona. I had to live in Arizona. I was planning to live out of my Sprinter, and my Sprinter needed a $6,000 transmission change. And I found this on Craigslist for $7,000 and traded in the Sprinter. Uh, mm -hmm. for credit and bought it. Because we both have experience with converting vehicles, so this isn't our first. Kind of knew what we were looking for, and with, when this popped up, we were really excited. It was a blank slate, you know? It was like yeah. most of the, we had to take out the seats, but then it was just like you could start, we didn't have to take a lot of time pulling everything out like you have to do with an old RV. Mm -hmm. You kept some of those seats, <laughs> which, we, which we will get to. Did you do anything to the exterior at all? We changed well, the stickers. Yeah, we... We got the magic tool bus. We call it the magic tool bus, by the way. So all the TriMet logos were removed, and uh, we thought we were going to change the paint job, and then realized that we really actually love this style. So what I like is that we fabbed the doors, and now they will. What? Is that, is that real? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy magic. So you operated that through a, a your button on your. Claire and I both have one. Yeah, this, mine's falling apart. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's a simple um, switcher, and since the doors have um, a pretty simple PCB setup. All right, so I'm gonna step in first, and then you guys can give me a rundown of like like the front area because I find it really interesting. Yeah. Look at this grass. We did that on purpose. Because <laughs> you guys put electrical in a really weird spot. 
I don't want to say weird. weird. I don't want to say weird. You're right. We haven't seen many vehicles. My apologies. It's not weird. It's different. Yeah. And it's fascinating. It only just became possible as a thing because LiPo has just become small enough and powerful enough that we could do this. So we actually originally had a battery bank that was located over here. It took up this entire cubby section. It was four giant AGM telecom batteries, so lead acid. Actually, they were so heavy that they tweaked the axle of the bus. They only like wore that tire <laughs> out early. So we got tired of that. That, and when lipo got small and light enough we always dreamed of putting yeah i was like oh, I'm like and I'm, I'm a sucker for symmetry i really wanted it to look good we built these packs with uh the lithium iron phosphate cells and the bms you guys put this entire thing set up now in the bulkhead or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. i guess yeah mm -hmm. and it's really simple because it ports straight up to the panels on the roof yeah the panels are coming down through here so there's like a little bulkhead and that came with the bus Ooh. which is nice and uh yeah so those are coming down and then it comes down into here, and then we got the charge controller, and we've got DC to DC charging. alternator to charger uh, that's charging off of the. Uh, so how many amp hours, give or take, are in this thing? Because that's what people mostly know is amp hours, even though you two, work 200. with it. 200. 200. 200 to 12 volts. In here, but that's not all the power that we have because we also have an all-in-one pack that we dump power into. Yeah, it's all it's down Which here. Is the, uh, yeah, shameless plug. Light Harvest Solar 2.4 kilowatt hour. Yeah. Uh, Leave it to this guy to crash generator. your guys' party, yep. huh? Before we get to that portable power station, again, Miles, thank you. I wanted to point this out because this is on a, this is a shuttle bus. And yep. you were saying this to me earlier, uh, Claire, that. What we find is a lot of people think about airporter shuttles when they think of shuttles and they, shuttles can get crappy. Airport shuttles in particular, um, the type that are a very thin cardboard and single fiberglass frame, uh -huh. they're built very like crappy RVs and they will just, you know, it'll tear, it's very hard to work with. But this is a different beast entirely. Okay. These nicer shuttles, the bigger, heavier, nicer ones, are a double thick fiberglass hull with a metal frame. There are adventure vehicles that are built with this. People don't take shuttles seriously because of the fiberglass aspect, but there's a very big difference between the good ones and the bad ones. I find this interesting now you guys obviously do have great insulation in here because i know that you put some foam board in here yeah however it's a solid 10 to 15 degrees cooler inside than it is outside right now mm -hmm. we're in portland right now it's about 80 something degrees it's very comfortable inside your bus yeah, so that's in part because of that double hole right that's what i'm saying between. and the cross flow of air which we really wanted to both back and front door partially for airflow now i'm gonna now switch places with you guys you guys can come inside and you guys can give me a rest of this tour in here jared did you see the uh solar powered electric unicycle I was going to say, oh, sorry. Again. <laughs> my again, goodness. Again. So earlier when you jumped in, Miles, I was going oh, to say, look at you. we have <laughs> this power pack, which is amazing, but we also have an electric unicycle, which functions as a LiPo battery dump. It's just a giant battery. 326 so watt hours. The more... So neither one of you knows how to unicycle. We both, no, we both have Oh, you do? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, another shameless plug for you, pal. Okay. How oh, do you yeah, like this? Okay. okay. So this is your other power source. Yep. Mm -hmm. 2.4 kilowatt. Does I hear that Correct. correctly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's another 2.4. So that doubles it, our... That's the same capacity as Same those. capacity yeah. as that. That's the same capacity yeah. as what you got up here? That's yeah. my point. It doubles our capacity. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. That is a lot. Yep. Yeah, that's how we can... kilowatt. All right, Miles, yeah. your your shameless plug is worth it, okay? Yeah. Thanks. Jeez. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And yeah. So now we use this. This will take out, like, we'll use it as a dump because we can produce more solar than we can possibly store in a day. So this lets us dump power into it and then. Like we can use it for cooking, but like we take it out and run a projector for it. We use okay. it as a generator. We bring it to yeah. parties. We run lights off of it. Kind of separated your spaces really well. So you have like a living quarters back here, and you have almost like a workstation. Right, this is the shop. Yeah. This is the shop. Yeah, is that we, we, I, I was calling it work. Yeah, this is Claire's workspace. This is mine. Yep. Yeah, Sam. Why don't you give me what your workstation is all about here? This is the former wheelchair lift, so it's all built around the, the wheelchair. It did at one point deploy, uh, and probably will again, but currently it, it, it doesn't. And so I've got all of my parts bins. So this is like small 12 volt stuff. This is small plumbing fittings. This is like random stuff. Or that's audio equipment. Well, what do you what do you do for like what do you what do you do for like for work or well, even I, even miles over I here? I mean, I work I work in Light Harvest Solar. I, I, I sell uh, off grid solar equipment. Um, and I like to make stuff, and I like having all of the stuff that I need to make stuff. But before I worked here, I worked at a hardware store. Okay. So it's like having all of my parts bins, it, whatever I have is what I'm constrained to mm -hmm. for whatever I'm trying to build or fix when I'm on the road. But I have enough that I can usually figure something out. The bus is such a fun sandbox because we get to some place, we get kind of bored, and then yeah. we just start working on the bus, and right. we have enough tools to do it. And yep. then we figured out, like, very early on in the build that it's just like, 
magnets all the way. Yeah. Magnets are the only thing for holding tools that have ever stayed right. on. Everything right. else vibrates off. Claire, what do you got for your workstation? Yeah, so we knew- I hate to say this, but you seem a lot more organized uh, <laughs> than, <laughs> than Sam is. That's we're, fair. We're a good pair. Look, look at this. Look at how clean and organized this area is. And then I'm going to turn to Sam's and it's like, oh, so, dude, you're job. awesome. Like, you're, this is the you're... cleanest it's been in months. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, Claire, go ahead. So, what we knew we wanted that was a little hard to calc out and build in is we knew we wanted a big enough space that we could carry. Originally, we were carrying my hobby laser cutter. Okay. And so, that is the exact space of this under the table. We knew we wanted a large work table. Sam found this on the street, actually, and pulled it took the, off the legs. Pulled it was the legs table. Out and mounted it and I, I really loved it. And it's the right size that we can carry. We're constantly being asked because we really have space. We're being asked to carry stuff to, to festivals. Yeah, our friends. <laughs> we can carry four by eight sheets of material. We can function as a nice cargo vehicle. Cargo yeah. vehicle. That's part of the reason for this. And having it be like a standing height. Mm -hmm. And we wanted a standing height desk. So this is a die cutter. And we came to this after putting a laser cutter and a 3D printer in the bus. Both of those things really don't like the vibration of traveling. So a die cutter actually handles it really well. If we move to the back, yeah. we are back-ish. You have this mid-level seating area. Looks like a bunch of other, you know, it looks like a small kitchen. Interesting you have two refrigerators. Or are they? So since we have a lot of solar power and we really can kind of flex with it, we bought this fridge a while ago. And, it was uh, the cutest one on Amazon. It was the cutest one on Amazon. Well, the, um, but it is pretty cute. The cutest one of a, what is the type of uh, The compressor ones. You the, want the compressor ones, not the thermoelectric ones. You don't want a thermoelectric fridge. And it's if you're buying them on Amazon or anywhere online, it can be kind of hard to figure out if they're thermoelectric or not. You definitely want a compressor fridge. And then two years later, this one was 250 bucks. It's a nicer fridge. Wow. <laughs> So we use this one as a freezer. So we can bring ice and ice cream to events and blend things in a blender off of solar power. I like it. A lot of buses have a bedroom in the back, yep. which if you guys can tell depth wise, the back of the bus is, in, is only a couple more feet after that, mm -hmm. which is a bathroom technically. Yep. So, oh, by the way, guys, these are original seats. Yep. These are, these are the original they're, seats. They're the shuttle bus seats. They are the shuttle bus seats. Did you have, obviously you have to turn these around, this one around. Yep. Yeah, yeah okay. this is not where they were originally installed. Yeah, no, we, we custom fabbed these to mount them on. Okay. So that we could have this storage. We also wanted the bed to be tall so that we could store those big black and yellow totes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to put those underneath. And so does your bed, height. is your bed like, does it fold into like a bed? Like how, like, like a dinette style bed? Yeah. How does your can, bed work? We can show you. Let's do it. Let's I want to see the let's bed. Let's see how fast we can do it. Claire. Oh, you don't have to do it in a speed record time. <laughs> I mean, I could always put some time lapse on this. All right. Or I can see. say it, I can do it as uncut and just go and see how long it does take. So it looks like I'm going to commentate. How's that? Yep. Uh, it looks like that they just folded the uh, the seats down here. And it looks like the it's a Murphy table on a Murphy bed. Did I do that right? Did I say that? Right? I guess it is. It is a folding table in a Murphy bed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What? And this obviously sleeps too. Yep. This is about, a, if I would say a queen. It is halfway in between. It is custom it's fab. This is, the frame is technically, I think, a twin. But we have added storage here. Oh. So we have an extra chunk of space back here. We can pull up and like put and all of our blankets. That's the biggest, Heavy. biggest problem with a Murphy, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> where do you hide? Where do you stuff? hide? Yeah, where like where, when it comes down, there's yeah, an yeah. open space in the back. Beautiful setup. Claire, this was your doing, I believe, and I'm going to touch on the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, you did something that's really fascinating that I kind of, I'll pan the camera up here. You hand painted this, I believe. I did. I just looked up mural painting videos and there's some really awesome artists. Did you watch some, what was it, Bob Ross? No, uh, no, but we, <laughs> we are inspired by Bob Ross. We yeah, we got some Bob Ross cards. cards. Do you really? Yeah, yeah we got the inspirational Bob Ross playing cards. Okay. They each have, yep. they each have quotes. A... Just looked up a couple tutorials on how to paint. And what I love, oh, what I love about building out your own space that is this size or even smaller is that it takes no material at all. So I bought sample pots of paint for all the paint that you see. That's all you use. I bought sample mm -hmm. pots <laughs> and I haven't run out. Oh, and wow. so this was two sample pots of paint, yep. six bucks. We set them all up against a wall and we projected with a projector, a actual star map, true star map okay. to the sky. And then we drilled big and small holes 
for the big holes, we glued um, fairy lights, which is little, um, tiny little lights on wire. We glued them in behind the big holes, and then we have LED strips that are backlighting the entire thing down the center that glow through the very tiny holes. And kind of twinkle and give you like a two-tone thing at night. You can mm -hmm. really only see it when you're like facing right up at it. I take a lot of pictures and put them on our Instagram because it's... It, well, you just mentioned pretty. it. What's your Instagram? Yeah, it's... The Magic Tool Bus. Right. It's, I, you I, did I, say I, that at the beginning, believe, didn't you? I believe it's <laughs> at Magic Tool Bus on Instagram. Before we go to the back, which is kind of the cool... Look, I, I think the whole thing is cool, but even cooler stuff back there. I don't talk about price with professional builders. However, you guys are DIYers. Yes, we are. So I am going to ask you, yeah. roughly, what's your price? We put it at about 15 grand into it. Um, That's including the bus. Including, including the, the bus. bus. Yeah. It's a point of pride and something we talk about a lot because we have converted vehicles before. We know a lot of conversions. We know how the culture can trend toward too expensive. Sure. Um, and if you can afford that, you can. But if you can't, it feels really exclusionary. And we want to let people know that you can do this for a pretty standard amount of money. Now, it does help that you work for this guy right behind me. Sure yes. does. Okay, so you probably got a little bit of a discount on some electrical stuff. Yes, well, if I, get, I got those panels on Craigslist because they have been chewed through by squirrels, the wires. You fixed it, obviously. Yeah, I fixed them. So there's a lot of stuff that we've like built ourselves or fixed or scavenged, and um, that, that helps. But we're not carpenters. We're not experts. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Uh, <laughs> we really aren't at all experts or professionals in a lot of what went into this bus, and it's worked out very well anyway. Behind you, Sam, mm -hmm. is you have a shower, but it's oh, not yeah. just any old shower. It is the shower loop, or it, a shower loop. A shower loop. You, you have, if you've noticed, we like fun and experimental things. So. Yes, <laughs> so you took a design mm -hmm. uh, off the interwebs. Uh -huh. Which I believe is just showerloop. Showerloop.org, yep. yeah. yeah. Designed... I wish I could remember the guy's name, but um, yeah, it was part of like a proof of concept alternative energy or like a alternative everything like hackathon that happened. So it happened over the course of three days. They just designed it and then open sourced it and put the designs online. We use the 12 volt pressure pump that comes with one of those like Harbor Freight irrigation mm -hmm. like sprayer pumps and that's like the main water tank that is going through a water heater which has a heat exchanger it's one of ice attempt like mm -hmm. seven gallon water heater pumps up through the spigot and comes down and then there's uh actually a second pump that sort of sucks it through uh the filters and so there's a particulate filter and then there's a charcoal filter and then there is a uv, UV. pond sterilizer filter it's firmly in the experimental phase we have taken showers in there like if you let it sit for a long time it can kind of smell a little bit like pond water but that's, okay that's so like the worst case scenario after months of sitting what's I'm, a long time months oh, months, oh like oh. months in the summer not having like flushed it that was i guess my next question was is that water is staying in there and yeah, then you have, the to, you have to flush it out water. okay over the course of a trip for example like you you can put new water in it yep and then do recirculating showers for the course of the trip and then you can flush it kind flush of like it. a toilet you know oh um, okay so okay it's like it's not the same water for forever which i absolutely po uh, sure is possible to do and then on the other side of you is everybody's favorite toilet you don't see this a lot in buses. Is I have a walkthrough. Yeah. Yeah. I have yep. a walkthrough. Yes. And you can you can you can have a you can poop with a view. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we absolutely did that. I was gonna say, is, was that your intention? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> obviously could have put it elsewhere. We could have. <laughs> we knew that we wanted storage and a walkthrough, and so we spent probably the bulk of our design time figuring out this size yeah. is exactly the size where Sam and I can walk past each other. Yeah, okay. If, if we modeled it after like an airplane aisle, it has to be oh, enough okay. so that the two people can sort of pass each other if they kind of like do that. Yep. yep. You also love matching the grass from the back to the front. Mm -hmm. It's a nature set, correct? Yes. yes. I gave you guys a lot of crap for that one, sorry. Yeah. You did, it's totally reasonable. We love to build experimental open source systems. My baseline was no experimental toilet. I was like, what if we had a That's actually a what really a good, bio, that's what if we had a good baseline. Biodigester and Claire was like, no. A no what adjuster? Toilet. Bio toilet. Biodigester oh. toilet. Like a methane but digester, which is not a practical idea. In the backyard, <laughs> sure, but in the bus, no. <laughs> guys, thank you so much. Is there anything else you guys want to show me in your bus? Probably think of stuff later. You know what? That ovens it. all the freaking time. So yeah. if, if you have a question for Claire, Sam, yeah. hit them up on their Instagram. Yeah. MagicToolbus.com. Our Magic Instagram Tool. links uh, we have a link tree to okay. all of our useful stuff. We're here to share the wealth, share the love. You know, that's what we do, everybody. So uh, just two more lovely people that have built out a 100% DIY. Yeah. This is great. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And we will leave you guys at the booper. 
How's that? Yeah. yeah I understand. <laughs> I want to see someone do the bop down in there. That's pretty cool. The experience? No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I'm, can I sit on the top here? Yeah. Look at this. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Guys, I got to get some Windex on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to pop down and I'll show you guys what it looks like. <laughs> pretty cool. Very cool bus, guys. Thank you Thank so, you. so much.